All right, anybody that's ever paid attention to the mud fossils knows that I talk about the veins and the arteries all the time. Now, your artery will come down with fresh red, 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 red blood, and it has oxygen in it. And it pumps it down, pumps it down, pumps it down, and it, it, it goes through all these little blood vessels, and it comes out the other side of the vein and gets sucked back up and, and back, goes back up to get more oxygen. And that is, the, and, the, and you see this side goes, they, like they tanned them up here. See, there's two that get pumped in and there's two that come back. There's two that get pumped in and there's two that come back. Now, you see all these little tiny dots out here? Uh, that's the ends, that's where they stop. And all, there's a whole bunch of little tiny holes and they go across. And here's what does happen. At the very end, this is a distal phalanges fingertip, exactly like you have here, only it's been deteriorated. And I have another one here that is not deteriorated. These are from Giants and it's just what they are. Now, and, and, and this one, was the same thing. It didn't blow out at the end like this one did. This one is more deteriorated and it blew out from, you see those two sides there? You see? That's the, um, that is the arterial side. It blows out because the arteries don't have any clamps and they, it tries to push the blood and they blow out there and out the end. It's the same exact thing as you see here. Now the other side, the vein side, doesn't because that's being slurped back up to the heart and they close off here. See the clamp? They clamp off here. See right there. And, and the other one is up here. Same as they have here. Exactly identical. No difference. Now, you see that black thing right there? That's what's called a distal phalanges bone. It's the tip of the bone. And that is right in the tip of your finger. That's what it is. Now, uh, and that's the pattern that it makes when the bone bleeds out. And uh, that's called, um, you know, it's a, it's a ferrous oxide that bleeds out, bleeds out through stuff, just like this is bleeding out. This is a ferrous oxide to iron. It bleeds out through the tissues in the, uh, in the um, wood, same as it bleeds out in the tissues in this. This is a, uh, and you see this here? See that angle? That's where the, the tendons grab a hold here, and you can do all this sort of stuff. Now, this one here is very fresh. <laughs> now this, well they were both in CAT scan. The one I just showed you had uh, before was a DNA test. It's 100% human. Now this one here, you see that triangular looking thing again? You see that? You see that? That's, that's just the way your body makes it so your, your tendons can grab a hold here and your finger can do all this. And then there's a whole batch of them that come down the end here and they have like balls. And those balls fit into what's called an apical tuft, and it's right here. And here's one of those apical tufts. That's what's at the very tip of a finger. And all these little balls, all these little tiny tendon um, antithesis balls, go in here. Little tiny straps come back, and that's what makes them strong, so you can grip and pull your fingertips. Uh, and these, there's a zillion little balls in these things, and they find them all over the earth as giant ones, because there's giant people that had them. Now, as far as the blood going through, see here's what happens. Remember I showed you here, you get your vein and your artery, one or the other, one pumps it in, the other one sucks it back. Well, in the meantime, as it's going across here, it's using up the blood. Well, what happens is in your body, it's red and then it's blue after it's used. Well, in, in mud fossils, it's red or brown like that, rusty looking color, and it gets darker, 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 and it turns black, I mean black. And here's exactly this case right here. This is exactly what happens. The blood comes down through the arteries and it's red coming down in here. Of course, it's all rusted out now and turned brown, but you can see it. And as it moves across, it starts turning brown or brown or brown, and then it starts getting black. And it gets blacker and blacker and blacker. And if you look, you can see these all these little tiny blood vessels all over there. Tiny, tiny, tiny little holes. And that's just, 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 all that blood's going over. So give me some oxygen, give me, give me, give me. And all of a sudden it gets over there. I don't have any oxygen left. I said, well, go back up and get some more. It goes back, back up through the vein. That's the way it works. Now, this is the skin around the outside of the flesh. Skin has this uh, um, fibers in it. If you can see them, I don't know if you can see them here, but in a the microscope, they're very clear. And it has also minerals in it. This is what allows your skin to be strong and tough. And, and resist. Now there's all different types of skin. There's grip skin, which is really tough, and I, I, I would show you that. And there's also thin skin. It's like on your wrists and so forth, on your face. And they're all made out of uh, 
kaolin clays embedded with minerals and um, fibers. Alright, before we get started, this is home base for mud fossils. Now I discovered these in 2012 and I presented them to Yale and they dismissed them and I've been fighting ever since. So, this is um, my website and um, it's on the internet and um, this is um, the um, Mud Fossil University. You can go there, it's free and that's on YouTube, Mud Fossil University. There's all kinds of stuff on there. Now, Mud Fossils Part 12, um, which I don't know why you renamed it Part 12, but that's what it is. If you go here, this will tell you how to find your own mud fossils. You can find them in a matter of 15 minutes, and I will absolutely, positively guarantee you that you will have them in your possession within 15 minutes. All of these, are every rock you pick up is going to be a mud fossil. Whether you can identify it or not, I don't know. They all have veins and arteries, and if you cut them open, you would find them. There is no rock that does not have veins and arteries unless it's a, a, a lava. Now, you will see, as I show you, that some of them are very difficult to see. But once you know what to look for, you'll find them. All right, so let's, um, I'm going to show you some specimens and some uh, pictures on the videos and so forth, and then we'll go from there. All right, these are both big toes. I mean, that's just what they are. Now, that is the, um, the vein. And that's why this is all black. I'll show you that in a second. Same thing here. Now this has been very, very transitioned, so it's not nearly the same as the other one. But this is the vein. And if you look here, you're going to see this. There's like a strap that comes across, just like this. And then it leads out to the fingernail. Now, you can see here, if you can see, I don't know if you can or not. There's the same strap that comes up. You see? Strap over here. Strap over here. It comes across, right across the top, and that's where the fingernail would have been. Now, on the, um, on the side over here was where the callus is. That's the callus right here, and underneath is what they call the, the grip skin. Now, this is very, very transitional. You can see, and it's turned into, like, crystal. Now, this one has not transitioned as much. And this one has the grip skin, and it's it's still fabric. You see that these little white fibers. That's that's um, they call that uh, keratins, keratins, and they're little fibers that are in what they call the grip skin, and that's the the tough skin on your fingers and your feet and your toes and on the bottom, the real tough stuff. And this one here has it as well, but you can barely see it. You see, there's a pocket. Both of them have like a pocket in the front. Well, you can't see it in that shot. Um, see this? Well, you can't. <laughs> yeah, feel it right here. <laughs> There's a pocket in there. All right? And, and in that pocket is this fibers and stuff. And that's like, there's a pocket up in here. You see? Same thing. There's a pocket up in there. And those fibers are in there. Uh, in the microscope, you can see just the bare remnants of them, but you know, and they're there. And I'll, I'll try to show that in the microscope. But this is what happens with the fabric of, uh, of skin. Now, you see here, this is the um, heel, or uh, not heel, um, the toe pad right here. That's a pad on the back of the toe. And this one has the same thing here. You see it? There's the pad on the back of this toe. And in front, it has the same architecture, same thing. This is, this is a toe. It's just what it is. Now, that's where this callus is on the side of the guy's toe. <laughs> that's a fact. It's just what, what, what they happen to do. And there's, uh, I have something around here. What is I have other ones that have the calluses. I've shown, I got these in many, many, many different. And that was the top where the uh, fingernail was, or the toenail. And you see the red spots? That's where all the blood invests. And that's where the uh, callus is. And they all have the red. See the red in there, the black? That, well, the black is uh, in this here is from the, uh, the, the toenail. Now, oh, this is the, the vein blood, which it blew out this side. And that is almost unheard of. And the reason it blew out this side was because the other side is the, the arterial side, and that 
has that cap on there with the guys. It's just like putting a plug over. Look at all the the metals and everything that tried to leach out of here from, uh, you know, they call that sublimation as the organic, volatile, organic stuff gives off. And you see, it's, it's the same thing. There's going to be red, there's going to be black. Now, this would have been red blown out here. This tried to blow out the arterial side, which is the red blood. Almost never, ever have I seen this. And that's the black blood blowing out from the vein side. Just capped over here, it had nowhere to go, boom, it blew out. Now, this is the funny little skin that's on the inside of your big toes, facing the, you know, the rest of your toes. And it's kind of a funny little type of skin. And uh, let's see, I believe, oops, this right here. That's this one here, you see? It ha and if you look at this um, in a certain way, you can see this wavy looking little pattern here. Uh, when it dries up at a certain point, you, it, it becomes a little more obvious. But you, this is it's the same thing. And that one did, will, uh, they all will deteriorate until they become literally um, like glass. I mean, I can't account for that. But they do end up becoming like literally like um, clear. And I believe this is a heart. And um, or maybe no, I, I think this is a lung. And uh, and that's what happens to them. And and, and it's a process of of uh, transition metals being leached away somehow in different uh, conditions. But you know, and they all turn different ways. I mean, look at this. This is a piece of meat, really. You see that? That's a latch, a, 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 they call that fascia. I don't know what you can see on here. But anyway, it looks like a piece of meat. And it, it was at one time, and then it got petrified in the ground in wet mud. Platypolar silicates surrounded the entire creature at one point. I think these are all broken up because of glaciation and, and, and what they call uh, glacial tilling, where they plow through here and break up all the things. And they normally break up along what they call fascia. Here, look, here, look at this. Whoa. This is a bursa. <laughs> you know, people have bursas in their bodies. Where, and, and what happens is your, your, your bone lays against there, and it's like a bumper. And See, they have the same sort of uh, coming together of all the fabric. This one here has a vein in our, oh, oh, a vein and artery on the back here. Oops. And you can see, if you look at this carefully, in the correct light, you can see the center. There's a, a, a circle pattern here, which literally is the, uh, where it was held on. I don't know, you probably can't see that. There's a vein and an artery, and then there's a circular, like a, a cord that holds these things in place. Human body is really interesting. Uh, you know, I have bones, I have giant everything, bones, and I show these giant, little, uh, those giant balls all over the earth. You see a little, little tiny hole there? <laughs> that hole inside there, you see all those little tiny holes? Those are what they call tuberosities. And they're where the emphasis points go into those two little tiny holes, those tuberosities. And they're little balls, and coming out of them is a zillion little straps. And that's what holds this bone to the other bone. It's called a ligament. So the two bones don't fall apart with each other. Then they have additionally the same thing, only they come up and they hold on to the sides of the bones to pull this bone back and forth. Those are called tendons. And they have the same thing. This is like little balls that go in there. They call There's all kinds of names they have. And it ends up being going down to the tiniest little one called Sharpie's fibers. And uh, that's what this is. Now, they don't find them in this kind of condition. See, the, what happens is bones go away in, in the perfectly preserved ones. You know, i got to tell you a funny story. I'm watching them doing an excavation on a dinosaur bone. And these brown bones are inside of flesh. They're literally inside of flesh when you find them in the ground. So they're digging the flesh off of this bone to get to the bone. And I'm saying, they're saying, yeah, get that clay out of there. Dig the clay out of there. And I'm saying, that's the flesh. It's the flesh. And they're pulling tendons off and everything. I'm just, I say, oh my God. Anyway, they got down to the bone like this. <laughs> and that was a prize for them. So anyway, that's the way it works. 
Um, and I have the ones meet all over them. I have fully articulated everything. So that's, that's but they, they, they don't understand this. They're not looking right. Their eyes are not open. And their minds are absolutely not open. By the way, this is a, a fingertip. And here's, uh, you know, that's where the fingernail is. Now, this is where it blew out the, um, the blood at the end, just like it's on those fingers. And uh, it blew out as um, garnets. That's what they are, garnets. And uh, all, it, see, they're all over the place. They call this garniferous, but it's really blood. All right, and you see the strappy little fibers here? That's your grip skin. That's, what could, that's the strappy little stuff that makes you tough so you can grip things. And, uh, and then there's a vein and an artery in here. I don't know if you can see them, but you see, that's, you see that little bump there? That's the actual clamp that clamps off the vein, that little dimple. Now over here, I don't know if you see this, I'm sure you won't be able to see it, but there's a, a little clear one over here. I, I can't see it, my, my eyes aren't that good. But it is a little clear one over here somewhere that is the, uh, is the vein, I mean the artery. And the arteries go, go blank or, you know, they fill up with, um, with silicates, with clear silicates. Usually, you see, you can even see a little. I think I can see it now. Anyway, that's what it is, and and the inside, you see, the bones are gone, totally gone. No, no bones, and the reason they're gone is because of, I believe it's called nucleophilic invasion, which is where um, other actually things come in. They say, get out of here, I'm coming in, I'm taking over, and they leave. That one comes in, pushes the other one out. So it's nucleophilic invasion. And then of course there's other ones where they bond together, but it's because of of um, of transition metals, and I have a lot of information about that. I can't get into all of these things that really every single time I do it because it's just crazy. I have so many videos; it's embarrassing, and I'm sorry I do it so much. But you know, I keep running to things, and nobody seems to pay attention. I seem to think I'm sooner or later going to get somebody to pay attention, but I don't know when that later is going to be. It certainly didn't happen sooner. <laughs> By the way, everybody asks about the uh, DNA report, and it's right here. And um, if you go in, it will tell all about that. There's three specimens we had tested, and it's it tells all about how they did the uh, extraction and the, um, um, you know, all of the different things. They had to put it in certain conditions and this and that, and everything was done very, very, very textbook. You know, deep inside samples, nothing right on the surface. Uh, all kinds of negative controls checked out, no problems. All the negative controls came out negative. Um, and, and it goes down, no, 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 no. So that's, that's what we got as far as that goes. Now, uh, then on, um, it, it, I have a uh, lab report. When, I, I talked to the lab here too. Well, I usually 100 no. to 200 tops because the DNA is so fragmented because of just the, you know, the degradation. This is know, a couple the, of years uh, you know, ago. The years of, you know, wear and tear and things like that. Yeah, yeah. But I was able now, this to, is a big you know, toe. I'm going to show it again. That that, uh, the that's a one. Success with, and that seemed like the best option. And the, you know, uh, Another one. DNA primer that will essentially amplify all types of that's a so, you know, not just human, but any kind of, kind of vertebrate life form. So and, that's uh, a, so a they're rock, sort of a universal type of fit for Tendon. these samples, because we don't know, obviously, what the samples consist of. So, oh. the, you know, the sequence that came back, it was roughly, you know, oh. for each of these fragments, about 100 base pairs matched them up in the uh, database. In order to the with the, you know, the human mitochondrial, there's two regions. Oh. Of the mitochondria, one is called the D, like the letter D, is a dog, the D oh. loop, and then the other one I believe is for cytochrome B Thank gene. Uh, the mitochondria has several different genes that it uh, consists of, but these uh, these primers were specific for those areas of the mitochondrial genome. So um, yeah, so I you know you know considering where we you know started a couple months ago, that that's, uh, you know. Those are nice results to have. Yeah, that's kind of amazing. The PCR and, and the DNA sequencing, so. Wow.
All right, anyway, that's, that was the lab. Now, that's a lung right there. You see that? That's the pleura, they call it, of the lung. The ancients used to call it tunica. It wraps your lung, and then you get down into the lobes of the lung. See how it's, uh, it's already red down there? It's just, they, they're everywhere, and they're just not, they just, they just can't get their eyes open, and they can't get their minds open, and they, they, they just can't look. So they just ignore it because they're afraid of the result. And the result is going to be kind of devastating for them because they won't pay any attention to this. That just shows how close their minds are. So it's up to them. It's up to you. Have a nice day.